Stanley SU 6500E pre-delivery guide. Congratulations on purchasing the SU 6500E generator. Please make sure you register your warranty to ensure to take advantage of the extended two-year warranty. Simply log on to stanleygenerators.com.au and follow the link to the warranty portal. This pre-delivery instruction is split into five sections. What you need before you start, component identification, assembly instructions, pre-delivery instructions, and starting instructions. Section one what you need before you start. A clean even surface, suitable device to cut the straps and tape when removing the generator from the carton, spanners you require that are not supplied with the generator are an 8mm, a 10mm and a 13mm. Two litres of SAE 10W30 engine oil. Brand is not important as long as it's SAE 10W30 specifications. A new fuel container, preferably plastic, filled with fresh unleaded petrol. Do not use unleaded petrol containing ethanol, commonly referred to as E10. Section 2 Component Identification Hour Volt Hertz Meter Key On and Off 12 Volt DC Power Outlet 12 Volt DC Circuit Breaker Oil Drain Plug Oil Dipstick Battery 240 Volt Power Outlet RCCB muffler, ground terminal, 240 volt circuit breaker, fuel gauge, fuel cap. Choke lever, air filter, starter rope, fuel tap on and off. Section 3 Assembly Instructions. Firstly, unpack your generator. Warning. Two people if required as the generator weighs 88 kilos. Remove the generator from the carton and place on a clean flat surface. Enclosed in your carton along with the generator is an owner's manual, oil fill funnel, spark plug spanner, 12 volt charging leads and an inner carton. Enclosed in the inner carton is a nut and bolt bag, wheels, generator support stand and generator travel handles. Assembling the wheels. 
Required for assembly of each wheel supplied in the kit is an axle, an axle washer and an R pin. Take note to identify the wheels, the front of the wheel and the back of the wheel. Insert the axle into the front of the wheel. Turn the wheel over and fit the axle washer. Slide the assembled wheel into the axle holders located on the frame. Once you fit the wheel to the axle, be sure the axle washer stays in place. Simply secure the axle with the R-clip via the hole provided. Repeat this for the second wheel. Assembly of the generator support stand. Parts required from the kit four 10 mil nuts and bolts, the generator support stands. The generator support stands are attached to the opposite end to the wheels, bolted onto this support bar. There are four pre-drilled holes in the frame to mount the support stands. The inside holes are not used for this model. Fit each stand into the outside holes on both sides. Once in the hole, secure with the 10mm nuts. Tighten the nuts firmly. Assembling the travel handle. Parts you require from the kit are locking pins, the remaining nuts and bolts, four spacers, and the travel handle. You will note there are two pre-drilled holes on both sides of the outer tube of your generator. Place one spacer on the inside of both handle mounts as shown. Line up the handle and spacers with the bottom holes in the frame on both sides. Once in position, insert the bolts and secure firmly with the nuts. To use the travel handle, pull the handle in an upwards direction, secure the travel handle with the locking pins on both sides. Connecting the battery. Locate the battery, positive terminal, negative terminal. Remove the terminal bolts. First fit the positive red terminal and secure with bolt. Tighten firmly. Once tightened, firmly place the protective cover over the bolt. An 
Now fit the negative black terminal and secure with the bolt tighten firmly. Once tightened firmly place the protective cover over the bolt. Now that the machine is assembled let's start with adding the oil. Locate the oil filler cap and remove. Using the funnel provided, place into the oil fill opening and fill the generator with 1,100 mils or 1.1 litres of SAE 10W30 oil as specified. Make sure the oil is filled to the point of overflowing from the filler. It may take a little more or less oil. Refit the oil cap. Adding unleaded petrol. It is important to ensure you use ethanol free unleaded petrol in your Stanley generator. Do not use unleaded petrol containing ethanol, commonly referred to as E10. Always start with a new fuel container, preferably plastic. An important note. We recommend the use of a quality fuel stabiliser, particularly if the generator is not being used regularly. The use of fuel stabilizers will prevent costly repairs caused by stale fuel. Adding unleaded petrol. Remove the fuel cap, fill the tank with unleaded petrol. The fuel gauge is located next to the fuel cap. Refit the fuel cap. Safety warnings. Read all warnings in the instruction manual on pages 2 to 5. Only use outdoors as exhaust gases contain carbon monoxide. Never use indoors or in an unventilated area. Always disconnect appliances before starting. Firstly, you will need to turn the fuel on. Turn the fuel tap to the on position. Sliding the choke lever to the choke position. Slide the choke lever to the left to the choke position for starting. Section 4 Starting Instructions Starting the generator by the electrical key start. Turn the key from the off position to the start position. Once it has started let go of the key and it will return to the on position, much like your motor vehicle. Slide the choke back to the run position. Starting your generator manually by the starter rope. Follow the same procedure as the key start, choke, fuel tap, etc. Put the engine switch to the on position. Pull the rope.
operating the AC240 volt outlet. Check that the circuit breaker is in the on position. Note the circuit breaker will turn on if there's an electrical short usually caused by a faulty appliance. Once you have restarted the generator, if the circuit breaker comes on again, please check the appliance for faults. Please ensure the appliance is in good working order or the generator is not operating beyond its 2800 watt capacity. Make sure the residual current circuit breaker or RCCB is in the on position. RCCB will turn off if there's an electrical short, an open circuit, an exposed wire has been touched by the operator. This can be caused by faulty appliances, faulty leads, faulty plugs. Once you have restarted the generator and the RCCB turns off, please check appliances, extension cords, etc. for faults. Please ensure the appliances are all in with good working order or it is not beyond the generator's operating capacity of 2800 watts. To operate an appliance or plug in an extension lord, simply lift the cover to this 240 volt outlet and plug it in. Stopping the generator in normal circumstances such as refueling or stopping and restarting within a few hours. Firstly unplug all appliances and simply turn the key from the on position to the off position. Stopping the generator if you are not going to use for an extended period of time or the machine is being transported in your vehicle. Ensure all appliances are unplugged. Whilst the engine is running, put the fuel tap from the on to the off position. Run the generator until it has stopped. This will run the carburetor out of fuel so it does not cause stale fuel to block the engine's fuel system. Fuel blockages are not covered by warranty turn the key to the off position.